by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be reading, brethren, from uh, the Gospel to Matthew, Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 36. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 36. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be com the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, who he, whom his master made ruler of his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on that day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Alleluia. We thank the Lord, our brethren, for this beautiful passage. And um, I know that the Lord has a beautiful message for every one of us this morning. The Lord here speaks about His coming, His rapture, when He will come to rapture His church. And the Word of God says that the day and the hour no one knows. And we know that this is not for us to know the day and the hour, but what we must know is everything that is mentioned in the Word of God. So the Word of God says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will, be, will the coming of the, man, the, the Son of Man be. And I would like to go with you just to very quickly read a few verses from the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 13. I will just read a few verses, not the whole chapter, but it is very critical for us to know what happened during the period that Noah lived. So I will be reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 13. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gaffer wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And then we will be reading from uh, verse 17. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And then we will be reading from chapter 7 and verse 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. So, brethren, we can see that the days when the Lord will come, will be the same as were during 
the period of Noah. There was ungodliness on the earth. There were bad days, dark days. Violence was among the people. And I think that this reminds us of what we are living at the moment. Of course, we are the children of God. In, in our households, we, we live in the presence of the Lord. Even though people from our families and our loved ones are not saved yet, but because one in the household is saved, then the holiness of the Lord dwells in this household. So that will be the period when the Lord will come as the days of Noah were. For us in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So brethren, it took Noah almost 120 years to build the ark. And for this period, Noah was called by the Lord, and it's written in the book of Hebrews. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. So we can see, brethren, that everything was according to the Lord's plan. And Noah won during his generation, which was fully soaked in sin. But Noah made the difference because he was full in the faith. His heart was faithful and he was faithful to what the Lord asked him to do divinely worn and I think brethren we can see the same thing happening in our days where the church of Jesus Christ is divinely warned of what is gonna happen in the future in the near future because we know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand so we have been divinely warned about the Lord's coming and also we have been divinely warned that in the days where the Lord will come, people will be the same as they were during the days of Noah. They were eating, drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. No one will know. No one will realize they will continue eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. And they, no one will know until the day that the Lord will come. And what will happen in that day? Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. And this, brethren, gives us the context of what will be, take, will be taking place at the time when the Lord will come, at the time when He will rapture His church. We will be in our normal days. Other people will be in the field. Other people will be in the, in the mill. And the people in their house, other people will be sleeping when the Lord will come. And one will be taken and the other will be left. And that's how the Lord will separate his people from this earth. And we can read again. We don't, you don't have to go there, but I will read it for you. When the Lord came and everyone entered the ark, the Lord, after that, shut the door himself. And no one will be able to enter after the Lord's coming. So we have to be very careful, brethren. Now it is the period of grace where people 
are able and have everything they, they need to prepare themselves for the Lord, for the Lord's coming. We have everything we need, brethren. We have the Word of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have the ministries. The church is being edified but by His servants. We listen to the Word of God from everywhere. We can listen to the Word of God even at any, at any moment. I remember when we first went to the church and we became believers, we only had the opportunity to listen to the Word of God in the church or by using cassettes. But now, the Word of God is everywhere. At any moment, you can listen to the Word of God through technology from every mean, every medium you can use. Even from the phones, you can listen to the Word of God. But when the time will come and the Lord will visit and He will take His own and the rest will be left, then there is no grace anymore. So we can see, brethren, that we now have this opportunity. But now, we will be reading, brethren, from the verse 45, which is the message of this day. Who then is a faithful and wise, and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? We read about Noah. He knew, as we read, brethren, that the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. That was the Lord's message to Noah. And then, the next verse shows that he made him a servant. And he said to him, Noah, make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. For our days, the Lord has faithful and wise servants and he made them ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Brethren, every one of us is a servant of the Lord. It's not only for the deacons in the church or the elders or the pastors or the apostles or the ministries. It's for, it's for every one of us. Because every one of us, the Lord has put them in their position when, where they have to give food in due season. The father to give food to his family. The mother to give food to her children. The church to take care of the body of Christ. To the deacons, the elders, the pastor to, to feed the flock of Jesus Christ. To the husband or wife who his or her loved ones are not saved yet. To show the good testimony of the name of Jesus through their lives. Every one of us, brethren, have a responsibility before the Lord to give food in due season. Do not think that you are not a servant of the Lord, because you are. Do not think yourself that you are nothing, because you are not nothing. You are a servant of the Lord, because no one of us, nor me, nor another person can be where you stand to give food to the people that the Lord brought near you. I cannot give food to your wife, dear brother. You cannot give food to my wife, dear brother. But every one of us is a servant of the Lord to the place that the Lord has positioned them. And we must be faithful and wise to the work that the Lord has bestowed on us. Blessed is that servant 
When is, when is the servant blessed? Whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. So you have to do what the Lord has asked you until the day he comes. Do not be tired. Do not be bored. Do not see and have different opinion from the Lord because what the Lord has bestowed you is the work that you are able to do. Any other thing that you imagine that you could do, you can't do it. You can maybe start it, but you will not be able to finish it. Because the Lord knows your ability better than you do. The Lord knows who you can feed. And that's why he has positioned you where you stand at the moment. If something else is prepared for you, wait and the Lord will bring it to you. Do not be enthusiastic and trying to take more that you can actually hold. Many people are very enthusiastic, especially where, where they are, when they are in the beginning of their faith. They think that they can preach to everyone. They think that they can like, take on the load from the church and do things here and here, things there. No. Everyone has their own position in the body of Christ. A baby cannot lift load whatsoever. But an adult is able to lift more. A stronger adult is able to lift, to lift even more. So brethren, when, where we're now standing in our positions, that's where the Lord wants us to be. And He wants us to find us, He wants to find us faithful and wise where we are. Noah, when the Lord asked him to build an ark, he did not start, he did not start doing other things like preaching and going to the world, oh, repent, repent. No, he did exactly what the Lord asked him to do. The Lord asked him, build an ark. Build an ark. Do not go to people to preach them, but you will preach to them by building the ark. And it is written, I think in the epistle of Peter, he became a preacher of righteousness. But how? By building an ark. Yes, by building an ark. You will be a preacher of righteousness if you are a faithful and wise servant. You will be a preacher of righteousness if you feed the servants of the Lord from your position. You will be a preacher of righteousness if you are a father and you are teaching your family the gospel. You will be a preacher of righteousness if you are a mother who takes care of her children by teaching them and growing, growing them up using the word of God. You will be a preacher of righteousness if you give the message of the Lord where the Lord has positioned you in your work, in your household, or everywhere where the Lord has positioned you. You will be a preacher of righteousness because this is your ark. This is your ark, Father. This is your ark, Mother. This is your ark, Deacon, Elder, Pastor. This is your ark. To do the Lord's work from your own position. And not only build this ark, but you have to make it waterproof. And why? You have to cover it inside and outside with pitch because it has to be waterproof. Nothing will be able to penetrate this ark because this is the work that I have bestowed to you to do. Make everything perfect. And the perfection will come if nothing can come from outside to inside your ark. 
And in order to do so, you have to be a diligent servant. You have to be very careful with the work of the Lord. You have to be faithful and wise. If you feel that you lack faith and wisdom, the word of God says, and God help me find it, it's in the book of the epistle of James. The epistle of James, chapter 1 and verse 5. If any, of, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. So you see the two components of the faithful and wise servant, to have faith and wisdom. I'm reading it again. If any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. If you have a doubt, this moment, while you're listening to the word of God, go to your knees and pray. And say, Jesus, please fill me with your Holy Spirit. I don't want to have doubt in my thoughts when I'm thinking of you, when I'm thinking of your work, when I'm thinking of your word, when I'm thinking of the authority that you have given me. I don't want to be doubtful. For he who doubts is like a wave of a sea driven and tossed by the wind. Have no doubt, brother and sister. Have no doubt, but be a faithful and wise servant. Serve the people that the Lord has brought next to you. Do not try to find more, but the Lord will bring the people you need to feed at His time. Blessed is that servant who his master, master when he comes, will find so doing. And the Lord came to Noah. And when the Lord came to Noah, he had finished the ark. So he was blessed because the water flood were coming and the ark was ready for him to get inside and be protected. So that's why the Lord has given you a work to do. Because this work will give you the opportunity to be saved at the time of the temptation. You will be saved because the Lord will ask you then to go inside the ark. And you will enjoy the work that you have done by the help of the Holy Spirit. Blessed is that servant who his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. And remember, brethren, the Lord came to these servants of him who received the talents by the Lord. And when they worked on the talents that here they received, then the Lord came back and he had account with them. And when they showed that they have doubled the talents, the Lord said to them, a beauty, this beautiful story saying that you will be good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the law of your Lord. So you see, brethren, there is always a beautiful wage when you work for the Lord and you do His work diligently. Assuredly, I say to you, says the Lord, he will make him ruler 
over all his goods. But then there is a big danger that the servant who received the work from the Lord to become evil. Why? Because as we read before, as in the days of Noah, men were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So someone can be tempted and will not be able to resist to the temptation. And the Lord says, but if the evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. And he begins to beat his fellow servants. Not only he didn't do the work that the Lord asked him to do, but on the contrary, he did not resist the temptation. He started beating his fellow servants and he started eating, eating and drinking with the drunkards. But he is the servant of the Lord. Yes, but he was not faithful and not wise. So faith and wisdom will make the difference to the servant, brothers and sisters. That's why we have to go to the Lord today. Do not hesitate, do not delay, do not postpone, but go to the Lord today and pray faithfully and ask Him to fill you with wisdom because it is very critical for our future in eternal life to be faithful and wise and to do His work on this earth perfect, perfectly. To follow His commandment, to serve as we are supposed to, to serve our fellow servants, to feed them in due season in order to make our master satisfied and happy with us. And then when he comes, he will make us ruler over all his goods. Because we know we're going to receive a heritage, brethren, and we will be heirs of the Lord and join heirs with Jesus Christ as it is written in the Holy Bible. But the evil servant, who is starting beating his fellow servants, and beating fellow servants is very common to people who are, who are not faithful and wise. They are starting speaking improperly. They are starting biting their fellow servants. They do not respect the work of God. And then they eat and drink with drunkards. Because as we said, the days we are living in are evil and bad. And the world is eating, drinking, marrying and giving marriage. But we have to be separated from them. We live in this world, but separate. How can this be? That's why we need to be faithful and wise. Wise in order to observe what is bad and avoid it. And faithful in order to always be on our Lord's knees and pray for power and strength, for wisdom, for holiness, to be washed with His holy blood all the time, to repent and to see, and then, brethren, we will see the face of the Lord shining in our lives. Then the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him. So the servant who is not faithful and wise is not looking for his master. He wants to be called the servant, but he never looks for his master. 
because he thinks my master is delaying his coming. My master is delaying his coming. But this servant, brethren, does not know when the Lord is coming. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, brothers and sisters, what are we today? As you can understand, brethren, and I can feel it in my heart at this very moment, that the message of the Lord is critical for every one of us. So now, me, you, discern, look deep in your heart and test yourself. And I'm testing myself at the moment. Am I faithful? Am I wise? Do not say yes. Do not say yes, I am. But better say, Lord, please help me be. I lack wisdom, Lord Father. And I will read it again, brethren, from the epistle of, of James. And the Lord says, Chapter 1, again, in verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, go today to your knees and pray for wisdom. Every day, pray for wisdom. Not wisdom to be smart in your work, but wisdom to be a faithful and wise Servant, ask for wisdom to serve your fellow servants wisely and with love, care, and compassion as the Lord did with you, as the Lord gave himself for you and for me, as the Lord died for our sins and for our blessing. And that grace today, brethren, is teaching us to become faithful and wise servants. Yes, the times we're living are evil. And we can see, brethren, all these people outside, that they are soaked in sin. They are soaked in sin. And they are eating and drinking, and marrying, and giving marriage, but we must not be like that. Today, brethren, as faithful and wise servants, let's dedicate ourselves, our hearts, our whole bodies, our minds to the Lord, in order He makes us faithful and wise servants. Otherwise, brethren, I can tell you, there is no possibility for any one of us to resist the worldly temptations and desires. No way. Now we are in a lockdown. And you know something? In this lockdown, we are very well protected. But tomorrow, when this lockdown will be lifted, and again, we will be outside our houses and our households. Do not forget the Lord's word. Ask for wisdom. Do not look right or left. Do not think of yourself that you are lacking comparing to the world. But think of yourself if you are lacking wisdom when you compare your heart and yourself with, your, with the word of God and then the Lord will come and fill you with his wisdom because he gives his wisdom without limits, with no reproach. Ask and you will be given. 
Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Brother, sister, be a faithful and wise servant in order the Lord to come and find you doing so when he comes. Do not ask, Lord, when you are coming, because this is not something we should ask. We know that this is nothing that can be revealed to us. No way. Because this is only known to the Father. Not even his angels, not even the Son knows this day and time. But brethren, the only thing we know is that we must be faithful and wise servants in order to be able to win this constant battle until the Lord's coming. May our Lord Jesus Christ, brothers, brothers and sisters, bless us all. He who has ears to listen, listen to what the Lord says to his church. God bless you all and blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.